Welcome to this instructional video by FSI and Mizuho OSI, your guide to safely transporting, setting up, and breaking down the Mizuho OSI HANA table. Our goal is to equip your team with the essential knowledge on various pickup and delivery methods for the HANA table, covering safe transportation, setup, and breakdown procedures. FSI requires all partner agents and drivers to undergo this training, ensuring safety and success in every operation. Mizuho OSI, a pioneer in orthopedic and spinal surgery solutions, partners with freight services to ensure a safe, positive, and successful experience for delivery and pickup of these tables. There is no one size that fits all when it comes to shipping medical equipment. The way you pack, label, and ship, load and unload, varies on whether you are sending to a university, doctor's office, hospital, or a bioskills training facility. Mizuho OSI's partnership with freight services stems from their dedication to adaptable delivery and pickup solutions tailored to Mizuho OSI's specific training sites. As a freight services driver and partner affiliate, your frontline role is vital for the successful delivery and setup of these tables. Our commitment to technological innovation, creative solutions, and unwavering dedication to exceptional customer service drives our pursuit of total client satisfaction and safety. When your team is loading or unloading these crates into your truck, make sure to have two straps per crate. When loading the Mizuho OSI crates, position the door latches that are on the crate against the wall of the truck. If you do not do this, it could cause damage to the crate during transport. Please see this example of what happens when strapping the crate incorrectly. Pull the strap so it does not twist. Then ratchet the strap so that it is snug to the crate. Tuck the excess strap behind so that it will not get in the way. Take the second strap. Then attach it to the E-Track roughly 18 to 24 inches below the top of the crate. Clip the top strap to the E-Track on the wall. Then take the top strap and pull it tight to secure the crate to the wall of the truck. Once the strap is tight against the crate, tighten the ratchet. Tuck the excess strap behind so that it will not get in the way. Each crate should be strapped in this way prior to transport. You are now ready to transport the Mizuho OSI crate. As a freight services driver and partner, our team will send instructions and training materials several days prior to the services requested. When scheduled to pick up or deliver, please call the Mizuho OSI representative 30 minutes before you arrive on site. The Mizuho OSI representative will always be listed on your paperwork. Make sure to read over all of the pickup or delivery instructions located on the paperwork sent from freight services. Follow these instructions for your safety. And if you encounter any issues, notify freight services promptly for resolution. In this short film, you will learn the proper and safe way to handle and set up the Mizuho OSI HANA surgical table. When your team arrives to the pickup or delivery location, please make sure to call the Mizuho OSI representative to confirm that you have arrived. The Mizuho OSI representative will be listed on the paperwork that Freight Services provided you. If you are unable to reach the representative, call Freight Services. Before unloading, it's important to communicate with the representative to determine the exact location where the crate needs to be unloaded and where the surgical table will need to be placed in the lab. As the representative guides you to the lab area, watch for any obstacles or items that may be at risk of damage due to the size of the crate and the table. It's crucial to ensure a safe and damage-free transit while making this delivery. Once the representative has communicated the table's destination, proceed to unload the crates from your truck. Be attentive to the possibility that the client might prefer your team to assemble the table in a different area before rolling it into the lab. Depending on the situation, the crate may either stay on site or your team may be required to take the empty crate away from the lab. Flexibility and clear communication will help to ensure a seamless pickup or delivery process. Follow the instructions outlined in this film for a lift geek delivery. When arriving on site for a lift geek delivery, you must find a level spot to park the truck. If there is not a safe and level spot for the truck, you must immediately call freight services to discuss alternative delivery plans. Safety of the driver and proper handling to avoid the crate tipping off the lift gate must always be the priority. 
it is recommended that all lift gate deliveries should have a three-person team. Two will handle the crate and one will place the wheel chocks on all crate wheels and then operate the lift gate. Lower the lift gate and make sure that everyone is clear when folding it out. Make sure that your lift gate is at least 60 by 84 inches and can handle 2,500 pounds for single use. Loosen the ratchet straps and then detach from the E-Track. Once the straps have been removed, make sure that the person on the ground operating the lift gate has the wheel chocks. These can be found inside the back bottom door of the Mizuho OSI crate. Turn the crate 90 degrees with two people behind the crate pushing it towards the lift gate. As the crate is moved onto the lift gate, the third person places the wheel chocks on both front and back casters on each side of the crate. This will help secure the crate from rolling off the lift gate as it is lowered to the ground. When the area is clear, lower the lift gate to the ground. Once the lift gate is lowered to the ground, two helpers should move behind the crate to hold it while the third helper removes the wheel chocks. Now the crate can be pushed off the lift gate and into the delivery location. Once you have unloaded the crate, move it to a large enough area to assemble the table. On the right side of the crate, unlock the top and bottom latches. Once the latches are unlocked, open the crate door. Head towards the back of the crate and open the lower door. You should find in the bottom door a pair of wheel chocks. After getting the wheel chocks out, place them on the front casters. This is to help keep the crate from moving when you pull the table out from the crate. Unclip the strap that holds up the ramp. Lower the ramp to the ground. At the bottom of the crate, remove the two table blocks. To do this, just pull the lever forward and then back to release the table blocks. Once you have removed the table blocks, set them on top of the crate so they will not be in the way. Some of the crates have a different type of table lock. Remove the pin located at the bottom of the crate. Then unlatch the horizontal and vertical clamps. Repeat the same steps on the other side. Now pull out the table block and set aside. The table can now be removed from the crate. Make sure to have two people to do this as the table is very heavy. Once the table is out of the crate, rotate the table and position it where your team can install both of the leg spars. When the table is placed in the correct position, head back over to the front of the crate. Some Mizuho OSI crates have a Velcro strap that needs to be removed prior to pulling out the leg spars. At the top of the crate, pull the leg spar out of the top mount while the second team member takes the bottom part of the leg spar. Once the leg spar is out of the crate, rotate it 180 degrees before you install it on the table. Insert the leg spar into the table. Rotate the black knob to tighten the leg spar. Remove the other leg spar from the crate and install it onto the table exactly the same as the other leg spar. Note that when securing each spar in place, make sure that you also gently rock the leg spar while tightening the black knob. Before closing the crate, make sure to put the table blocks back in the crate. Close the ramp and secure the door by attaching the top strap and then close the crate door. Move to the back of the crate and pull out both of the blue bins located inside the upper door. Place both of the blue bins near the table so that all the accessories can be installed. Before you begin to attach the accessories to the table, scan the QR code on the side of the blue bin to complete the inventory form. Make sure that you complete the form when picking up or delivering so that all accessories are accounted for. Next are the details of what accessories should be in the blue bins. In the larger blue bin there are two foam inserts with cutouts designed to accommodate the table's accessories. In the bottom foam insert, the accessories should contain one hand pendant one perineal post, and two femoral assembly support hooks. In the top foam insert, the accessory should contain two traction hook extensions, two femur lift extensions, two extended femoral hooks, and two classic femoral hooks. In the other smaller blue bin, the accessory should contain two large boots, two small boots, one foot pedal, one extension cord, and one femur emergency handle. Starting with the smaller blue bin, you will see two pairs of boots. The client prefers the small traction boots. Take the right and left traction boots and insert into the leg spar and tighten the wing nuts. Take the foot pedal and place on top of the table. Then uncoil the cord and plug it into the front of the table. 
Next, find the power cable and plug it into the wall, then plug the other end of the cord into the table. Now take the hand pendant, clip it to the table, and insert the pin side of the cord to the table. You will see the hand pendant light up indicating it is correctly attached. Remove the femur lift on the side of the table by loosening the bolt. Pull the femur lift out of the slot and then rotate it upside down where you can see the port. Take the cord from underneath the table and then plug it into the femur lift by matching up the red dots. Once connected, put the femur lift back in the slot. Don't forget to tighten up the bolt on the femur lift. Repeat the same process on the opposite side. From the larger blue bin on the top foam cutout, take the femur lift extensions. Insert the femur lift extensions on both sides of the table. Take the perineal post from the foam insert and then place at the front of the table. Take the femoral assembly support and insert onto the femoral lift extension. Then insert the classic femoral hooks and place both of them on the femoral lift extension. Typically what are used in the labs are the classic hooks. Place two of them on one side of the table. Once you are done with the setup, place both of the blue bins back on the table. Then check with the client to make sure all is set up properly. After successfully setting up the HANA tables and securing the accessories, drivers can confidently depart, knowing they've left behind a fully functional and well-equipped lab. This quick glimpse showcases the efficient and professional setup that awaits practitioners in this optimized workspace. After the lab session is completed and Freight Services has scheduled your team for the pickup of the HANA table, follow these instructions once you arrive on site. Locate the two blue bins and then set them near the table. Unplug the foot pedal from the bottom of the table and then coil up the cord and insert inside the foot pedal. Place the foot pedal in the smaller blue bin. Loosen the wing nut on the traction boot so that you can then remove the boot. Remove the foam inserts from the large blue bin so that you can correctly place the accessories in the foam inserts. Head to the back of the table and take the hand pendant so that you can lower the table. Do not skip this step, the table will not fit in the crate properly if you do not lower it. Once lowered, disconnect the hand pendant and unplug the table from the outlet and the bottom of the table. Place the hand pendant in the foam insert. Remove the perineal post from the table and place in the foam insert. Coil up the extension cord and then place in the smaller blue bin. Remove the classic hooks from the femoral support hook assembly. Then place in the foam cutout. Remove the femoral support hook assembly and place in the foam insert. Remove the femur lift extensions and place in the foam insert. Once all accessories have been placed in the foam cutouts and blue bins, scan the QR code on the side of the blue bin. This will direct you to the inventory checklist form. The form requires you to enter a valid email. Please enter the city, state, and name of the storage place or lab where you are delivering or picking up from. Then enter the current date and click Next. Click on the Add File from your phone and then take a picture of both of the foam trays. Then upload to the form. Scroll down to the next item and again click on the Add File. Find the smaller blue bin and take a picture. Upload to the form. In the top foam pad, there should be the left and right classic femoral hooks. Check the bottom of each hook to make sure there is an L for left and R for right. Next are the left and right extended femoral hooks. Make sure to also check the bottom for a left and right hook. There are two femur lift extensions. Two traction hook extensions. In the bottom foam insert, it should contain two femoral support hook assemblies, one perineal post, one hand pendant. The smaller blue bin should contain one foot pedal, one power cord, two small traction boots, left and right, two large traction boots, left and right one femur emergency handle. Also, in some of the crates you might find a large perineal post. Please check in the back of the crate for disposable boot liners. 
Complete accuracy of the recorded inventory is required as these tables are moving on to another lab and they will need to arrive with all the accessories. If you are missing items, please ask for the lab manager to assist in locating items before you depart in order to complete the inventory checklist requirements. Once you have completed the inventory checklist, put the foam inserts back in the blue bin. Some labs will let you bring the crate into the lab to load the table and some do not. Either way, make sure to position the crate so that you have enough room to load the table. Open the back top door of the crate to load the blue bins. Unlatch the side latches and open the front door of the crate. Take both of the blue bins and place them in the top shelf of the crate. This is also where the foam boots will be stored. Unclip the strap and then lower the ramp. Once both of the blue bins have been loaded, close the back door of the crate. Remove both table blocks at the bottom of the crate and set them on top of the crate. Remember, some crates might have a different table block. Loosen the knob on the leg spar. Find the latch located under the leg spar and pull up to release the leg spar from the mount. Pull the leg spar out of the mount and then rotate 180 degrees before putting it in the crate. The top part of the spar should slide into the top mount. On some of the crates, you will need to use Velcro to strap in the leg spars. Remove the other leg spar and insert to the opposite side of the crate. Move the table in front of the ramp and make sure to have the front of the table pointed towards the rear of the crate. As the table is very heavy, you will want to ensure the wheel chocks have been placed behind the wheels of the crate prior to loading the table in the crate. Note that some of the crates will have a table lock that slides beneath the table to lock it in place. Latch the bottom and top of the table block. Take the pin and insert it into the hole at the bottom of the crate. Repeat the same steps on the other side of the table block. After the table is secure, lift the ramp up and then attach the strap to the front of the ramp. Close the crate door and remember to pick up the wheel chocks and place back in the bottom back door of the crate. If there are multiple tables and crates that are being delivered or picked up, please make sure to put the correct table and blue bins back in the crate. Now the crate is ready to load on the truck. If your team is dispatched a lift gate pickup, please follow these instructions. When arriving on site for a lift gate pickup, find a level spot to park the truck. If there is not a safe and level spot for the truck, you must immediately call freight services to discuss alternative plans. Safety of the driver and proper handling to avoid the crate tipping off the lift gate must always be the priority. A lift gate pickup also recommends a three-person team. Make sure that your lift gate is at least 60 by 84 inches and can handle 2,500 pounds. Make sure to chalk all the wheels prior to raising the lift gate. When raising the lift gate, make sure that you step to either side and are not directly behind the lift gate. Once the lift gate has stopped at the top, two of the helpers get into the truck and move the crate into the truck. Make sure to rotate the crate 90 degrees so that the hinges on the crate are not against the wall. Attach the top strap to the E-Track, approximately 16 to 24 inches above the floor and secure it to the crate. As two people in the truck secure the crate, the third person can fold up the lift gate. Once both the top and bottom straps have been tightened, the crate is ready for transport. From everyone here at Freight Services and Mizuho OSI, we appreciate you taking the time to watch this training film. We look forward to working with you in the future. This concludes the HANA Table training film. If you have any additional questions, please call Freight Services.